Hi everyone, my name is Yann Lafrance. I'm working for Citrix and I'm here today to discuss how could the Citrix ADC help you navigate your Kubernetes world. So we quickly realized with different meeting uh, with customer that Kubernetes environment has multiple uh, stakeholders within the organization. And also each of them has unique needs. By example, the platform team who is responsible to run and manage the Kubernetes platform uh, need to provide uh, developer agility or platform governance on the on the DevOps side, they need CI/CD or automation, and can I re enroll uh, progressive rollout? While on the developer side, maybe they need user experience, microservices discovery and routing, and on the DevSecOps, they might need security requirements for application and infrastructure, and also we see more and more API gateway. The NetOps team also has some requirements like network policies and network monitoring of the resource, and the site reliability engineers. I have some requirement like observability and post mortem information to be able to create those reports. So when we look at when we look at all those requirements, we end up with five very important things to consider when you begin your your, your journey to choose your uh, application delivery controller uh, to be able to meet all those requirements. So the first one will be the architecture flexibility. So what's the what's the right architecture to fit all your needs? So you will, make, you will need to make sure that you choose the right solution that being, uh, give you enough uh, flexibility to fit within the architecture you need. The second item will, will be, does it work with the tools I have or I'm already using for canary or ma uh, management or visibility or authentication? And also, if you, if you don't have those tools, so does the vendors provide you any tools to do those, those tasks? The third point will be performance and scalability because you build your app for that. So you deploy a Kubernetes environment for scalability and performance. So you need to, to know how dynamically the application delivery platform can support new content or, or microservices because those are of a limited time of life based on the load they currently receive. So you need, a, you need something with a strong discovery uh, for the new and the dead services. So you don't want to send raw traffic to a services that died a couple of seconds ago. And also another one is the app and API security requirement. It's very important because you already have a security requirement within your organization with the current apps. So you need to be able to uh, transport those requirements within the, the new environment to make sure that you stay compliant with the, re the regulation you, you, you have in place. And last but not least, we have the actionable insights where all to troubleshoot faster, we all to gain better visibility. So at Citrix, our solution portfolio for cloud native application uh, includes four different components. So the first one will be the application delivery controller itself. So uh, we, we talk about the Citrix ADC or the Nest Kero. Another component will be the ingress controller. So the ingress controller, the role is how to make the ADC container aware. So that's the role of the ingress controller that we provide to uh, uh, include within the, uh, the environment. And we offer, this is offered as a container or as a built, or built in within the CPX. Another uh, third item will be the application delivery management, which will be the centralized management console. That console would enable you to do automation and give you visibility. You have the ability to deploy that console on-prem or uh, use it as a service. And the final item that is very important for, uh, for us is the integration with the ecosystem. So we strongly believe that this is a key part of a successful integration or successful deployment for a uh, customer. So we focus here at Citrix on three key areas, which will be the cloud native platform. So we want to make sure we support platform like Red Hat, Pivotal, and those type of platform. Also, we need to support cloud managed Kubernetes like GKE or AWS or Azure uh, Kubernetes platform. And also we need to have integration with the tool that you're using. So the CNCF tool, or also the open source tools uh, for logging, uh, visibility and metric and, every, and so on. So that's something that we consider very important and we work to get those uh, in, um, integrations. Just to quickly review the Citrix ADC portfolio. So um, we have the, the virtual appliance that can run on any hypervisor, which is called a DPX. 
So this, this uh, appliance can also run on public cloud on Azure, AWS, or GCP as well. So a couple of years ago, we came out with a container-based version of our ADC, which is called CPX. And uh, more recently, we came out with the bare metal version, uh, which is called the, B the BLX, and run the BLX run on the Linux OS as a set of process. And of course, traditionally, we had the hardware appliance, the MPX, or the multi-tenant appliance, the SDX. But the most important portion of this slide is about is the fact that we uh, we all those platforms run on to, uh, as a single software code base. So we have a single software code to run all those those, those platforms. So that means you can download the, the, the firmware for one and the, install the firmware on a uh, different form factor of the uh, of the NetScaler. So that gave us the ability to have a feature parity across our uh, across our uh, form factor, and also gave us the ability to have a single API to manage all of them. So it enabled the customer um, uh, simplifies already uh, customer operation uh, with, with, with that fact. So how do you start, or where do you start? So maybe you can start the first uh, first option, who could be a two-tier ingress. So by example, if you have a third-party load balance, uh, ADC or load balancer or proxy, so and you you want to use Citrix, so you can de deploy CPX within your Kubernetes cluster, and from there you will have two-tier ingress to, uh, and you will split the north and south in two tiers. So that's one way of doing the deployment. Another way will, could be if you have a Citrix ADC already in place and you want to unified or, uh, unified or combine those two, uh, you can do what we call unified ingress, which we will use a single controller for both options. And uh, you can go in more advanced uh, deployment or you, where you will get uh, have more feature uh, feature rich and also we will get a better visibility which is called service mesh so we also support service mesh with uh, with our uh, appliance so you can have sidecar cpx uh, to your pod um, so that's something we support and if you want to benefit of the uh, uh, the visibility and the benefits of service mesh uh, but you don't want the complexity uh, associated to it so we allow you as well to deploy what we call service mesh like. The open source tool, uh, tools uh, and platform integration, like I mentioned uh, earlier, it's, it's something very important for us. So we grow that list every quarter uh, with new soft, uh, new integration uh, with the tools that our customers are, are currently using. So currently we have uh, that integration like with, the, like I mentioned, OpenShift or Grafana, QND, Istio, so we have already a couple of vendors, uh, not vendors, but uh, tools that we support uh, out of the box uh, with our integration with Kubernetes. But because you have those microservices, you already you also have some older uh, three-tier applications. So for that. Uh, what we what what we do, and if you don't have any tools as well, uh, we provide you what we call the Citrix Application Delivery Management (ADM), which is the centralized management console for all our platforms. But this will give you the visibility and uh, the, the analytics for the three-tier apps application, and also it will give it to you for the microservices as well. So you will have a single console to see microservices in traditional applications, and within that console, we also add what we call a service graph for Kubernetes. So the service graph reads the information from Kubernetes cluster, like label, to identify the name of the microservices and populate the different uh, information within the graph. So, and because of the, the traffic is going through the, NESC, uh, the Citrix ADC, so we have the ability as well to provide you metrics between, uh, between the different microservices. So by example, the, the bandwidth usage, number of re requests, the, the response type we receive from the back end. Uh, also, we can have visibility like uh, the latency or things like the uh, server response time increase. So we have those visibility and we can detect anomalies because of that. So, and we can identify, like in this example, you can see at the bottom, uh, you have the uh, red services, which means that service is in trouble right now. You should take a look to this one. The performance and the scalability is very important, like I uh, already mentioned. So we build a CPX with a very small memory footprint to be comparable with other open source uh, projects like Envoy or Nginx. Uh, and the thing is the fact 
the Nest, the Citrix ADC has been been built on software since the beginning, so 20 more than 20 years now. The it enables us to do a lot of um, to to learn and, and and do a lot of optimization over time through our code. So that brings us to a higher performance than open source vendors right now. So you can when you compare our SSL numbers or HTTP numbers against uh, different open source, you can see the Citrix is very performant. And one of the reasons is because we do what we call a single code pass, pass, which means for every feature, we don't need to go back within the code every time to do the uh, to process the packet. So we do the decryption once, then we go through our your feature set, and then we get out of the of the appliance. So this is very performance and remove a lot of latency causing by the ADC or the proxy. And also we support thousands of containers and high rate of state change. So this is designed for hyperscale and hyper elastic apps. So that's something we we provide and we commit to provide because that's the type of environment we uh, we support. Another very important aspect is about the um, the security line. So with the ADC based, based on the beginning, uh, and we grew up on, on that, we have a very uh, strong feature set of, of security on the, on the Citrix ADC, so we can protect from layer three to layer seven. Uh, at lower level, uh, lower layer, like three and four, we have firewall uh, protection, also the DOS protection. Uh, then we have a very, uh, uh, um, very strong SSL and TLS stack on the appliance. So that gives us the ability to visible proxy different protocols. So you can receive in TLS 1.3 with the client or with the services. And on the back end, the application only support TLS 1.0 or things like that. So that's something we do very well on TLS and SSL. And also the performance number are very good. And on layer seven, the web application firewall is, is part of the feature set. We have also the, the uh, email uh, dust attack protection, and we have a, a re rich feature set for authentication protection. So we support things like SAML, SP, or IDP. Uh, we are able to federate with third party. We have the ability also to uh, to do uh, open con uh, open ID connect or uh, OAuth, IDP, or SP. So we have a rich feature. Uh, secu uh, of security mechanism part of our uh, appliance or, or virtual appliance. And we also have an API gateway uh, on the uh, on the appliance as well. So that's something we uh, add recently. And we have a bug protection mechanism as well on the appliance. So we can, we can protect the a traditional three-tier application and also the market services based apps application now. We also have rate, rim li rate limiting as well on the appliance. So where to start with that? So if you already have an ADC, uh, you have the ability to leverage that one and deploy uh, our ingress controller and integrate it with the uh, IP address management. And from there, you will be able to, to, uh, to deploy a service type load balancer. So this is easy to deploy. You will have an access to an IP and this IP will be tied to your DNS name. And then from there, you can manage the service in the back end, uh, scale up, scale down the number of services you need and things like that. So that's very easy to start with, and uh, that's a good option to start with. If you don't have access to a NetScaler already in your organization, you have the ability to download a CPX or BLX or a VPX. Uh, we call it the freemium edition when you don't put a license on it. That means you, can, you start with a 20 meg um, license device, and then from there, you have the ability to deploy the services. Uh, so everything is documented. You can go on our GitHub uh, site, or you can reach to your Citrix, our Citrix site as well. So we have documentation on integration with OpenShift or Istio or, or, or Kubernetes. So you can go there to get documentation. It's all on the internet. So I would like to thank you for being with me today. I hope it has been interesting for you, and I wish you a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right, thank you, Ian, for this great talk. Let's try to monitor if we uh, if we have any question. So we've got some question from you from you coming in. So uh, the first question uh, I have for you today is, let me try to translate this one. Uh, do we need to have a Citrix appliance to leverage the ingress controller? 
controller within our community cluster. Sure, Jan, do you want me to answer that? Hello? Hey. Oh, uh, yeah, would it be nice? Uh, we got Pushkar that uh, join us also from Citrix. So if you just can give us a, yeah. a bit of a background so on yourself as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm I'm uh, product manager. I'm part of product management team on this cloud native networking uh, at Citrix. So I work uh, day in and day out on uh, Kubernetes and microservices uh, based architecture. Uh, to answer the question, can the uh, Ingress controller uh, be used with uh, other products? Um, so, so the short answer to it is, uh, you know, it's it's like a um, Kind of a between yes and a no. The reason I'll tell you, uh, Ingress controller is not something which is by default uh, available in a Kubernetes cluster. You have to get it from a customer X Y Z. So that Ingress controller is designed uh, in a way to work with a specific uh, vendor's uh, software. So what it means is, even though Ingress is a first class object in um, Kubernetes. Uh, there are a lot of features which are enabled through annotations, through config maps, through custom resource uh, CRDs, etc. So those will only work with Citrix, but the other standard object, uh, you could pretty much use that uh, on your uh, uh, other appliances. So the short answer is it is between yes and no. And most of the Ingress controller in the market are customized for uh, you know using it with a specific vendor. Thank you for that answer. So uh, now uh, another question that came in is, is there a limitation uh, in terms of performance between the, the free version and the enterprise version of, a, of the product? So, so yes, so, so the free version, you will not see any uh, decrease in the functionality. All the functions which are available in the premium version is also available in the free version. The only thing is there is, it is capped to 20 Mbps, pretty much the speed of your laptop uh, in old days, um, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi connection. So it has been bandwidth limited, so you can't go beyond that. All right, thanks. Uh, another question that we got, it's, uh, if an organization already leverage the Citrix ADM, does it uh, mean that they will be able to uh, manage SSL certificate and the metrics or uh, other relevant information from one single uh, place? Yeah, so manage is a very bloated term, right? So, so if you think about certificate whole life cycle, one is I want to know all the certificates which are in my system, uh, when they are expiring, uh, what I need to do. So ADM allows you to do that. Okay. So on ADM, you could go um, have visibility around all the certificates which are about to expire. We have a dashboard around it, but the whole aspect of rotating the certificate or changing or issuing certificate and then kind of implementing it, that is not something which ADM has and you have to depend on some external certificate managers for those like let in script or vault and, uh, Citrix cloud native stack, which is today's talk, uh, especially in the world of Kubernetes, we integrate with those third party certificate management tools like Latin script and uh, vault. So short answer, visibility, yes, through ADM, the whole certificate management plus visibility, you need a combination of both. <laughs> 